Say hello to my little friend. Hello YouTube. So I've been studying about how to improve my guiding with a harmonic drive mount. I found a lot of settings that I'm going to try. Hopefully they'll work. But I also was reading about guide scopes. We know that your guide scope should be at least a third of your focal length of your OTA. Mine is not. So I was looking at Amazon and I saw a 60 millimeter SV Boney guide scope. It was on sale for 89 bucks. But then I saw there's a little checkbox underneath that said 20% off. So I checked that, went down to $69. I don't remember much after that. I must have blacked out, but a couple of days later, it showed up on my front porch. Must have been some kind of involuntary reaction. I don't know. Anyway, let's go look. All right, here we are. This is the box that it comes in. Made in China. It was shrink wrapped, but I took that off because it had my address and everything on it. So let's open it up. Yeah, looks like it's packed. Scope rings. Um, they have little plastic tips on them, so I guess that won't scratch the scope. Mounting hole on the bottom. Two of them. Mounting thumb screws, Allen key. The dovetail. And here we go. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay, SV Bonnie, 60 millimeter guide scope. Um, feels pretty good, solid metal construction. This end we have thumb screw to tighten up for the, I guess they call this the coarse focuser. It's like it goes out to three and a half centimeters. Doesn't feel too bad. Dust cap not worth a crap apparently. I guess we don't have a screw in there, so. Pretty solid. And we have a helical focuser. It's supposed to have an eight millimeter travel for the fine focuser. That feels pretty good. Not scratchy or anything. We have, looks like a brass compression ring inside. So the two thumb screws to tighten your camera in. Don't mar your camera up. So 60 millimeters. It's an Acromat. Means there's two lenses here, probably together some way. Weigh is 790 grams. Focal length of 240 f4. 30 millimeter diameter, 120 millimeter focal length. It's f4 also. I have the 305 Pro ca color camera for my guide scope. I'll be using that along with this too. I guess we'll keep that in there for now. Mm -hmm. 
We have M42 threads here, in case you can connect your camera that way, I guess. Supposedly multi-coated elements. Let's see something. Oh, hey, that works. Okay. There is the lens. Oh, you can see. I don't know if you can see that. There's two lenses. They look like they're cemented together some way. Oh. The edges don't look black too much. And they kind of are. I think I'm going to do an upgrade right at the moment. Give me one second here. Okay. The edges of the lens don't look really clear. They look like they've been blackened a little. So the inside has kind of a ribbed texture. Inside looks fairly flat, so that's pretty good. All right, but here we have the Sharpie Magnum. I think I'm gonna extra blacken out the edges here. Okay, if they weren't black before, they are now. All right, that's the unboxing. Let's see if we can get it attached to my telescope. Okay, here we are. New guide scope connected to the OTA. You can see that I used the Vixen dovetail that I had on the telescope originally before I put the Lost Mandy plate on. I turned it upside down, used a couple of Vixen dovetail clamp connected to the scope rings on the guide scope. I think it's pretty sturdy now a lot sturdier than my little one was so i pointed the telescope at a microwave tower on the mountain behind me about seven and a half miles away or eight miles away or 11 and a half kilometers and did something i haven't done for a couple of years i put a eyepiece in my telescope i have a 15 millimeter eyepiece with crosshairs on it so i used that to line up the ota and the guide scope as good as i could I've also printed this batten off mask for the guide scope, so I'm going to try and nail the focus tonight. That's supposedly supposed to help your guiding. So the plan for tonight, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the small guide scope. I'm going to get everything polar aligned, focused, slew to a star on the ecliptic and the meridian, then run the PhD2 calibration and guiding assistant and then just start guiding and see if this scopes any better than the little one was once i see how that works then i'll start playing with some settings in phd2 i have a bunch that i'm going to try well not a bunch but i have several that i'm going to try that i think will help and hopefully it all works out it's supposed to be clear tonight got a little bit of a breeze going on hope that goes away but Let's go see what we can do.
Okay, we are polar aligned, focused. So we're going to slew to Regulus like we did last time. Okay, let's plate solve, make sure we're close. Okay, going to PhD2, start taking some pictures, choose a guide star, Okay. Okay, we're going to run the guiding assistant now. And run it for two minutes. Okay, two minutes. both of those. Clear. Okay, so so far it is better. I went from about 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2 that started out pretty good at 0.5, but now it's gone up to 0.84. Staying around there right now. So I'm going to make my changes now. Okay, I think I have to stop first. Stop. Now go into algorithms. There we go. I'm going to change this to hysteresis. And my aggressiveness is going to be they say between 30 to 50. So let's start out at 40, right in the middle. And my max duration needs to be half of what your guide pictures are, which is 0.5 right now. If I wanted to take one second exposures, I would do this at 500. But since we're Doing half second exposures, we're gonna do 250. I'm not sure about the aggressiveness on the declination. I'll leave that at reset, resist switch. Okay, well, we'll try this first. Okay, so. Start. Okay, well, let's hope it doesn't go up very much. Okay, well, I've let it run for a while. It seems to hover around 0.7 to 0.8-ish. Which I'm okay with right now. Way better than my old mount was. Well, I'm going to do a lot more messing around. But that will be all for this evening. Maybe I'll try for a target and see how it works on that. All right. Okay, quick update at the end. SV Boney 60 millimeter guide scope. Thumbs up. It improved my guiding just by adding that. Especially for the price I got it for. I think it's a 
worthy addition to the arsenal because we know how cheap I am. So now the mount, I got two nights with it. Well, a night and a half because of course clouds moved in the next night. Yeah, it's supposed to snow here this weekend. Welcome to Utah. So you saw the settings I had it set at. Um, so I averaged over the night according to PhD2. I got 0.8 RMS, way better than my old mount. I just let it run with those same settings all night. Both nights included meridian flips. They both went off without a hitch. One headache gone. So the second night I tried a few things before the clouds moved in. I may have had some high haziness with the clouds rolling in that I wasn't aware of, but I noticed that I wasn't getting quite as many guide stars as I wanted. So I moved the exposures up to one second. Uh, some other settings I tried, I, I moved them to one second, so I changed my max duration to 500. I actually set the deck axis algorithm to hysteresis. Changed the aggressiveness there to 40%, changed the RA aggressiveness to 35%. My guiding went down to as low as 0.48. I have proof. But it stayed right around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, almost to 0.7. So it was a little better, but the, like I say, the clouds were moving in, so that may have had an effect on it. I'm gonna have to do a lot more experimentation. But so far, it's a win for DIY. And if you're enjoying this kind of content, subscribe, give me a like. Also let me know in the comments what you like. I like comments. If you don't like it, keep it to yourself. Well, whatever. Over the night and a half, I was able to scrounge one image together. Not the greatest. I didn't use any filters. I didn't take any calibration frames, but I just used some old ones I had, so it is what it is. Check it out at the end of the video, and I'll talk to you later, and clouds suck. Thank you.